Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer for Thursday of the 25th week in Ordinary Time, September 24th, 2020. I'm Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. Before we begin, let us take a moment to recognize that we are in the presence of God. Let us begin as we begin all our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Awake, lyre and harp. With praise, let us awake the dawn. Our first psalm is Psalm 57, entitled, Morning Prayer in Affliction. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. For in you my soul has taken refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I call to God the Most High, to God who has always been my help. May he send from heaven and save me and shame those who assail me. May God send his truth and his love. My soul lies down, my soul lies down among lions who would devour the sons of men. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharpened sword. O God, arise before the heavens, may your glory shine on earth. They laid a snare for my steps, my soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but fell in it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing, I will sing you your praise. Awake, my soul, awake, lyre and harp, I will awake the dawn. I will thank you, Lord, among the peoples, among the nations I will praise you. For your love reaches to the heavens, and your truth to the skies. O God, arise above the heavens, may your glory shine on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, send your mercy, your truth, to rescue us from the snares of the devil. And we will praise you among the peoples, and proclaim you to the nations, happy to be known as companions of your Son. Awake, lyre and harp, with praise let us awake the dawn. My people, says the Lord, will be filled with my blessings. Our canticle is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, entitled, The Happiness of a People Who Have Been Redeemed. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant coasts and say, He who scattered Israel now gathered that gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings, the grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. They themselves shall be like watered gardens. Never again shall they languish. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. I will lavish choice portions upon the priests, and my people shall be filled with my blessings, says the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My people, says the Lord, will be filled with my blessings. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. Our second psalm is Psalm 48, entitled, Thanksgiving for the People's Deliverance. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king's city. God in the midst of his citadels has shown himself its stronghold. For the kings assemble together. Together they advanced. They saw, at once they were astounded. Dismayed, they fled in fear. A trembling seized them there, like the pangs of birth. By the east wind you have been destroyed, the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. O God, we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name reaches to the ends of the earth. With justice your right hand is filled. Mount Zion rejoices. The people of Judah rejoice at the sight of your judgments. Walk through Zion. Walk 
all around it. Count the number of its towers, review all its ramparts, examine its castles, that you may tell the next generation that such is our God, our God forever and always. It is he who leads us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, the body of your risen Son is the temple not made by human hands and the defending wall of the new Jerusalem. May this holy city, built of living stones, shine with spiritual radiance and witness to your greatness in the sight of all nations. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. Our reading this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, The heavens are my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house can you build for me? What is to be my resting place? My hand made all these things when all of them came to be, says the Lord. This is the one whom I approve, the lowly and afflicted man who trembles at my word. Blessed among us today is blessed Robert of Knaresborough, a hermit who lived from 1160 to 1218. Robert Flower was born in York to a family of means and distinction. As a youth, he desired to enter the priesthood, but left his studies to join a Cistercian monastery. After only four months there, he determined that God was calling him to something else. Leaving aside everything he had, he retired to a cave near Knaresborough, some distance from York, where he devoted himself to prayer. He was not, however, left undisturbed. His solitude was frequently invaded by bandits and eventually by the local constable, who, after charging him with harboring outlaws, destroyed his humble dwelling. He settled on a small piece of land on which he supported himself and provided for any poor person in need. One of his charitable practices was the ransom of prisoners. According to an epic poem that describes his deeds, to beg and bring poor men of bail, this was his purpose principle. His reputation for holiness eventually spread. According to the poet, he was a devout, debonair, and discreet man than whom a milder could not be met. Though Robert's brother, by this time the mayor of York, tried to persuade him to adopt a more conventional monastic life, he refuted to alter his way of life. So his brother built him a little chapel in his original cave, where Robert happily retired and later died on September 24, 1218. This is a quote from Blessed Robert of Knaresborough. Here is my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have chosen it. Our responsory, from the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. From the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. I will do what you desire. Hear me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. Let us serve the Lord in holiness, and he will save us from our enemies. Our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The response today to our intercessions is guide us in your truth O God 
Gracious God, you strengthen us in our weakness and teach us to trust in you. With grateful hearts we pray, guide us in your truth, O God. Give wisdom, knowledge, patience, and understanding to parents, teachers, and catechists. With grateful hearts we pray, guide us in your truth, O God. Comfort, comfort those who mourn and heal the brokenhearted. With grateful hearts we pray, guide us in your truth, O God. Help us to protect life in our laws, our education, and in the way we treat all the living. With grateful hearts we pray, guide us in your truth, O God. For Sacred Heart Catholic Church, our priests, deacons, deacon candidates, our ministers, for our parish staff, for all those who donate their time, talent, and treasure, but especially for all our parishioners and our parishioners who may either be ill or who passed away. With grateful hearts we pray, guide us in your truth, O God. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And our prayer amid our COVID-19 epidemic. Jesus Christ, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with a virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or who have died as they worry and grieve. Defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in the long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness, or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In the place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. Amen. All powerful and ever living God, all morning, noon, and evening we pray, cast out from our hearts the darkness of sin and bring us to the light of your truth. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May God give us heaven's dew and earth's richness and bring us together to everlasting life in Jesus our peace. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please have a blessed day. Please continue to take care of yourself and each other. And may God be praised.